Greetings, Python coders. Once again, this is Alan D. Moore, the author of Mastering GUI Programming with Python, a book that will sweep you off your feet to the lovely music of PyQt. Available from Amazon or directly from the publisher, Pact Publications. I will have links in the description. All right, so in this video, I had a question from a viewer regarding how to pass data between different objects or different windows or different widgets. So we've just learned about signals and slots and I feel like this is an appropriate time then um, to talk about this kind of issue because we've got all the information we need already um, to write this code. So what I've got here is I've got a, a situation where we've got a, a dialog window and this is just a cute widget subclass, Q widget subclass, sorry. Um, it's got a couple of line edits. It's got a cancel button and a submit button. And those are laid out in a form layout, just like we did our login box a couple videos back. Okay, nothing really new here. Um, and then I've got a main window class, also based on Q widget. And in this class, I've got a couple of instance variables, message A and message B, and then a couple of labels that display those variables, the, the strings in those variables. All right, finally, I've got an edit button. It's a Q push button. And as you can see, I've used the keyword method to connect the clicked signal to a an instance method called edit messages. All right. So this is the same, remember, as saying self.editButton.clicked.connect self.edit messages. Exact same thing. This is just the shorthand. I can just say clicked equals when I create the push button. All right. So we're going to stick with the short method there. Down here under edit messages, I create an instance of our dialog window and I show it. All right, so we're over in the terminal and we're just gonna run this. And you can see we've got our labels right here and I did bump the font size up. I'll show you how to do that in a later video. We'll talk about fonts and styling and things, but for now, I just wanted this to be big enough to see. When I click this edit button, it opens up my dialog window and it's got line edits, it's got cancel and submit buttons. All right, so let's go back here. Now I wanna interject here. I wanna preface this by saying, this is not the best way to do dialogues in PyQt. There is a dialogue class, Q dialog, that you can work with and create dialogues in a little bit more convenient way. Um, it's got its kind of own methodology. So this video is not how to do dialogues in PyQt. This video is showing you how to move data between windows. So I've kind of reinvented the wheel a little bit here just for the purposes of illustrating this, just so we're clear on that. So up in our dialog window, the first thing we want to do is we want to get the values of these strings from our main window into the dialog window, right? Because when we edit something, we want to edit it, not just have to retype the whole thing and replace it. We want those initial values to be there so that we can edit them. So there's a few ways we could do that, but I think the, the simplest would just be to add some parameters to our init function. So we can add message A, message B. All right, so now when we call the dialog windows init, we need to pass it the strings, the variables. So down here in our edit messages, we'll say self.message A and self.message B. 
So back up here in our dialog window then, when we create our line edits, we can just pass in default text, message A, and text equals message B. Okay, let's try that. We hit edit, we have it. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Little Lionel Richie there, if you're not familiar with that song. All right, let's close that out. That's one way we can do it. Now, maybe you're using a UI file, and so you aren't calling these constructors for the line edits. If that's the case, you know, you could just say, you could use the set text method, right? You would say self.message a edit dot set text message a. We do the exact same thing, okay? Works either way. And you could even do this in a separate method, okay? You could have a separate method, right? Define set messages, self, message A, message B, self dot message A edit dot set text. self dot message b edit dot set text message b okay again you could do that and you could call that down here after you create your dialog you know self dot dialog dot set messages oops Little autocomplete fail here. Message A, self, message B. Again, same thing. Uh, it would work either way. All right. So that's how we get data into the window. And tell you what, I'm going to read. Remove this redundant stuff in the init. I'll just keep the init simple. Remove that. And go back down here to edit messages and we'll remove those. So that's a little cleaner. If you don't want to add a lot of stuff to your init method, you can certainly do a separate method that works too okay but now let's go back to the question how do we get data back out of that dialog we want to edit those things and then we want to update them okay this is where signals and slots really come into play because we're talking about something that's asynchronous we don't know after that dialog is open at what point the user is going to click that submit button and we have not created a modal dialog that's going to block the rest of the application while this dialog is open so we don't want to freeze and pause the entire application waiting for the user to enter something so that we can update it so whenever you've got something asynchronous happening that's where signals and slots really shine so i'm going to create a signal here called submitted cute core dot pi cute signal submitted is going to send two strings and you probably guess that those two strings will be message a and message b so now we will have a method called on submit just self all right, so self.submitted, we'll call our signal, we'll call it emit, and we will emit self.messageA edit.text, self.messageB edit.text. That line's getting a little long, so let's just clean that up. 
All right, so the last thing we need to do is connect our submit button. So self dot submit button dot clicked dot connect self dot on submit. So what happens is when we click that submit button, this method will be called. All right, it will grab the text from A and the text from B, and it will emit that in our submitted signal. And also, we want to close our window in that function. I tell you what, and while we're connecting some signals here, let's go ahead and connect our cancel button also to self.close. Okay, so now when we run this, Just change that and we submit. Okay. Now nothing happens. We've just emitted a signal with those two strings. And as you can see, the dialog also closes. So to get those strings to update our main window, we will need to create a method called update messages. And it will take message A and a message B. Okay, and if we want to, we can go ahead and make that a slot, right? So that's uh, cute core dot pi cute slot, and it's a slot that takes two strings. That's an optional step. Again, it has certain advantages in certain situations. You can skip it, or if you know that this is only going to be a slot called by signals and not just a method that you might otherwise like to call, uh, that's a good thing to do. So uh, when we get a new self, or when we get a new message A, we want to set self.message A to message, oops, message A. Self dot message B to message B. Come on now. And we also need to update our widgets. So self dot message A display set text self dot message A self dot message B display set text self dot message B. All right, so now let's go back here. Let's edit. We'll say world here. We'll hit submit. Uh oh. Oh, we forgot a step here, didn't we? We created our method, but we didn't connect anything to it. That's the critical step. So under edit messages, when we create our dialog, we need to connect that dialog submitted signal back to self.update messages. All right, so just to review, because I stumbled a little bit there, we have in main window, this method that says update messages, okay? It is a slot and it is a compatible slot to the submitted signal that we created in dialog window because they both take two strings. That's why they're compatible. Down here, when we create our dialog, we connect its submitted signal to our update messages slot. So now, let's go over the terminal. Let's see how this works. Hello world, 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 world. There we go. Submit. Ah, now we've got it updating. Hello everybody. All right. And just to show you that hello works, everybody, everybody.
there you go. So what we've done is we've communicated messages two different ways. One way is just to pass it in by a method. And this can be done when you're not dealing with an asynchronous situation, right? So inside of this function, there's not any asynchronous stuff going on. We create the dialogue, we set the messages, okay? That's just part of its initialization. Um, when we have an asynchronous situation, we don't know when the user is going to click something. Okay, in that case, we can use signals and slots to say, well, whenever this happens, get this data and send it back to the other class. And I want to make the point too, okay, there could be other ways to do this, all right? There could be other ways to arrange these signals and slots. The reason I add a signal here under dialog window is you want to try to envision this dialog window as kind of a self-contained unit, okay? A black box, if you will. So, you know, we could have our main window connect to you know signals inside it could say hey when the submit button of the dialog window is clicked grab these things out of its uh, uh, out of its queue line edits we don't really want our queue main window to know too much about the dialog window we kind of want the dialog window to manage its own business right so if the dialog window for some reason if we decide to rewrite that so that you know, instead of line edits, it's text edits, right? We want multi-line strings. Well, if our main window knew too much, right, about... Yeah, so if our main window knew too much, like maybe it would say text, right? If we were reaching into our dialog window and grabbing that text right out of the widget, we would have to know the correct method to do that. And if we change from a line edit to a queue text edit, well, that's the wrong method. It's no longer text. Well, we don't really want that situation. We want the dialog managing its own business. So it's up to the dialog to say, hey, I've been submitted, and here's the data that was in me. Because the main window doesn't need to care about how that data has been put in or what widgets it's stored in and, and all that. All we care about is that data has been submitted, and here's the data. And by using this custom signal up here, we can do exactly that. We can just say, hey, dialog was submitted, message A, here's message B right? It keeps it very clean and very neat. So I hope this has answered the question. That's all I have for today. Again, check out the links to my book and to the example code down in the description. Um, the next video, I think we're probably going to talk about the Q main window class, which is a really cool class for basing your applications on. Until then, keep coding. Uh, keep doing the good work here, and uh, God bless you.